into pressure requirement. It has three components. It's an alignment system so that the corneal is centrally aligned. It has a pneumatic system from which the air jet comes. And it has an ablation monitoring system which basically looks at the light reflex and sees whether it falls on the cornea or not. So the alignment system helps you to monitor it so that the cornea is centered. And it has three components. It can monitor either up or down or straight axially so that you are in reasonable focus. You usually start about 25 centimeters away from the eye and then bring it closer till it locks on. Now, this is three one of the things which required some manual input in the past. You would have a joystick and you would fiddle around till the eye was well centered and then you take the reading. But now the moment the eye is in the correct position, the chronometers automatically take the reading. There are a huge range of chronometers available there which is on contact principle, so I am not really going to go into any of them individually. But if you compare Goldman Apnition Tonometry, which is a gold standard for tonometry, versus non-contact tonometry, you find that, in general, NCT tends to underestimate a little bit as compared to Goldman Apnition Tonometry. And if you look at this graph, which basically tells you how different the two instruments are, you find that if you compare the two instruments, 95% of the time, your values would range between minus 2 to plus 5. So that is the amount of error that you can expect between these two instruments on a routine basis. The, the, the World Glaucoma Association consistent statement says that intraoperative pressure by the non-contact tonometers is on average similar to that of the Goldman Appalachian tonometry, but that is on average, not for an individual patient. NCT tends to be lower than GAT at lower IOP and tends to be higher than GAT at higher intraoperative pressures. So you should be aware of this whenever you use the device. If you look at this comparison with Goldman Appalachian tonometry, you find that very similar results are seen there too. You see it about minus 4 to plus 4. So it's not bang on. But what is interesting is that the number of eyes where the intraocular pressure was within 2 millimeters of the Goldman Appalachian reading was about 66%. That means in 34% of eyes, you would still get readings which are more than 2 millimeters more or less than what the device is telling you. Now the problem with the goal, with the NCT is again that it is affected by central corneal thickness. In fact, any device that indents the cornea very rapidly is more affected by corneal properties than a device which indents it slowly. And this is because of cornea's viscoelastic properties. So yes, the NCT is affected by the central corneal thickness. How much is it affected by the central corneal thickness? For every 10 millimeter increase in central corneal thickness, you see an IOP change of up to 0.6 millimeters. So it's a fairly substantial difference. It's not a very small difference. The other problem that comes with a very rapid repetition is that it is affected by ocular pulse. The ocular pulse, as you know, is a cycle, the cardiac cycle, where you have a variation in the intraocular pressure. And we'll be dealing with that a little bit more in the next presentation too. And this is one more of its disadvantages. How it has some uses? For one thing, it can be used fairly easily in children. And if you look at uh, this study, they found that they could actually get a reliable intraocular pressure measurement to 98% of children when they looked at a group of children. And they had about, um, I mean, this uh, a, a number of studies. Most of the studies told them that they could record intraocular pressure reliably in children in about 98%. If you look at it in terms of comparison with the other commercially available chronometers, there are disadvantages. It's there's little information available on how accurate it is in the regular corneas, but it's not very accurate because the light keeps scattering from an irregular cornea, so you're really not going to get to end point accurately. It is affected by central corneal thickness, and while it does not do corneal contact and therefore is often touted as being a very safe technique, you must remember that the jet of air can cause aerosolization of the tears, and somebody who's got a potential infection, these infected tears can sit on your Agent. And the next patient you have can theoretically have a risk of an infection. In fact, there have been reports that uh, uh, there have been reports of transmission of infection with this tool. So this tool needs clean occasionally, but not as rigorously as the NCT, uh, as the Coleman Ablation Tonometer or the Tonometers. So while this has unique advantages that you can do it without anesthesia, probably readings are slightly more reliable if you use anesthesia. And theoretically, you get no damage to the corneal epithelium. However, repeated NCT is known to cause subepithelial cysts. Intraocular pressure can be determined over a soft contact lens, which is a huge improvement. 
it can sometimes be a little startling to a patient who's having to do it for the first time, and therefore it's sometimes recommended that, that you discard that first reading that you get. In its limitations, it's not as accurate as the Goldman accumulation tonometer, and it's more affected by the ocular pulse and the central point of thickness. So how to maximize the reserves of a PLCT? In order to minimize these differences, if you take multiple readings and average them, you probably get a better idea of what the true reading is. And if you get any high intraocular pressures, many people use it as a screening device in busy clinics. But the thing is, if you use, get any high intraocular pressure, let's say more than 18 or more than 19, it's worthwhile to repeat it with a Goldman admission tonometry. Most of us as long as specialists see a lot of patients who come with a single NCT reading of maybe 24 who will start it on medication. And you stop the medication, you check them multiple times, the pressure is never high. And which is why it is recommended that Goldman admission tonometry not be, I mean sorry, the NCT not be used to diagnose and follow up glaucoma patients. If you have a doubt about glaucoma, please confirm with the Goldman admission tonometry and you follow up those readings whenever you're following them up with the Goldman application and not the NCT. Thank you.